Good evening, dear viewers, and welcome to the News Bulletin at 8, brought to you by a number of news provider, Eswatini TV. I am Nandumiso Vilagadi, alongside Zaman. Zaman, let's take a look at our newsmaking headlines. His Royal Highness Prince Banzili says it is very crucial that the Kingdom of Eswatini joins the rest of the world in addressing and closing the gap on epilepsy treatment and reduce the deaths and disabilities caused by epilepsy. His Royal Highness Prince Mkwasho says a majority of kidney or renal patients in the Kingdom of Eswatini have numerous needs and this calls for support from Eswatini and local businesses. Former South African President Tabumbegi, who is currently in the country to attend the Waterford Gamtlaba Africa Week event this Friday, paid a courtesy visit to the Prime Minister Cleopas Lamini at Cabinet offices. And now the news in detail. His Royal Highness Prince Banzile says it is very crucial that the Kingdom of Eswatini joins the rest of the world in addressing and closing the gap on epilepsy treatment and reduce the deaths and disabilities caused by epilepsy. The patron of the Eswatini Epilepsy Organization was speaking at Happy Valley during the certification ceremony of health workers who were trained on epilepsy. The Eswatini Epilepsy Organization, in partnership with the Taiwan Medical Mission and the Minister of Health, has trained nurses and doctors on epilepsy treatment. The training has been happening in all the four regions of the country, and the main reason behind the training was the treatment gap in the health sector. The health workers were capacitated on topics addressing treatment on epilepsy. In November 2020, the 73rd World Health Assembly adopted a resolution on global actions on epilepsy and other neurological disorders which requested the World Health Organization Director General to develop an intersectoral global action plan on epilepsy and other neurological disorders in consultation with member states. That is why Eswatini initiated these workshops. His Royal Highness Prince Banzile has expressed gratitude to the Taiwan Medical Mission for the support towards the initiative and also commended the Minister of Health for the tremendous work and for assisting the epilepsy organization each time the organization reaches out for help. May I also express my gratitude to the Ministry of Health for the many commendable works it executes both inside and outside the realm of epilepsy and other related disorders. As such, my gratitude goes to the minister for efficiently leading this sector of government. It was indeed your valuable inputs during all process that led to the approval of the Intersectoral Global Action Plan and epilepsy and other neurological disorders. ICAP 2022 to, well, Minister said now 2030, not 2031. And 20, um, on the 22nd of May 2022 in Geneva, as patron of the Eswatini Epilepsy Organization, it pleases me greatly that it is through the support of the Ministry of Health that Eswatini Epilepsy Organization was able to take up the baton on the implementation of the IGAP and in partnership with the Taiwan Healthcare Improvement Project under the Taiwan Medical Mission, carry out capacity building initiatives for healthcare professionals in an effort for the country to meet global targets. Taiwan Ambassador in the Kingdom, His Excellency Jeremy Liang said the aim of the workshops was to lessen the stigma around epilepsy because education is a long-term process towards success. The mission has assisted over 250 me 50 medical professionals by sharing them with uh, the matter at hand because it recognize, recognizes that education is the long-term basis for progress. 
the identification and the diagnosis of seizures, the pharmacology of anti-epileptic drugs, and the management of epilepsy, among many other topics, have all benefited, benefited from the dissemination of information made possible by these workshops. The Minister of Health, Li Zingosi, said the global burden of epilepsy indicates that there are very high numbers of people with epilepsy around the world and remains a huge cause of disability and deaths. The huge burden of uncontrolled epilepsy and epilepsy-related deaths in developing countries, including Eswatini, are a cause of concern. The deaths could be largely preventable uh, by improving access to care, including diagnosis, treatment, and promoting adherence to treatment. It is in the light of the above that Eswatini Epilepsy Organization, as we've heard with the Minister of Health support, partnered with Taiwan Healthcare Improvement Project in the training of healthcare professionals countrywide in various topics um, on epilepsy diagnosis, treatment, and management. His Royal Highness Prince Anzile has announced the new Eswatini Epilepsy Organization National Director, Tobile Masalela, and the Deputy National Director, Abraham Jalinjali. On the news, I am Polile Mazia, Azulwini. His Royal Highness Prince Mtuasho says a majority of kidney or renal patients in the kingdom of Eswatini have numerous needs and this calls for support from Eswatini and local businesses. His Royal Highness said this when the Eswatini Chronic Kidney Disease Support Foundation received a donation from the Umbuluzi Valley Sales in Matsapa. More than 8 million individuals are affected by chronic kidney diseases globally. It has been recognized as a leading public health program worldwide. There are about roughly 300 people who were diagnosed with kidney failure in the kingdom of Eswatini. Most of these people are in need of support and assistance financially as they go through their dialysis procedure. This is the reason why the Eswatini Chronic Kidney Disease Support Foundation was formed to give support and assistance to these people. The organization needs all sorts of assistance from Emaswati. Umbuluzi Valley Sales has become the first company to help the organization and donated 50 cases of different products. Patron of the organization, His Royal Highness Prince Mkwasho, expressed gratitude to the company for the kind gesture and further revealed that kidney failure patients have various needs that calls upon every Liswati to assist. As the Eswatini Chronic Disease Support Foundation, we are thrilled to have your support. Your donation is helping us to accomplish one of our aims and objectives that is to provide and or facilitate support of kidney patients and their families. A majority of kidney or renal patients in the Kingdom of Eswatini have numerous needs and that calls for every Liswati and business community to stand up and be counted as we embark on this journey of bettering the lives of Emaswati living with kidney problems and their families. As patron of the Swatini Chronic Kidney Disease Support Foundation, I am sure that if all stakeholders, corporates, business people, and Emaswati can join hands with one aim of improving the livelihood of those with renal failure, the country can recover very few, can record very few deaths from kidney failure and the patients will be concentrating only on treatment and recovery. The Umbuluzi Valley Sales General Manager Morgan Rudd said the company hopes to grow together with the organization and lend a hand whenever it's possible. We got the the request for a donation or help towards the Renal Kidney Foundation. We found it within our, within our mandate that it is a great thing to give back to 
It's great to give back to our nation, to our community. The organization has called upon everyone who may wish to assist to come forth. On the news, I'm Polile Mazia in Matapam. Former South African President Thabo Mbegi, who is currently in the country to attend the Waterford Gamtlaba Africa Week event this Friday, paid a courtesy visit to Prime Minister Cleopas Lamini at Cabinet Office. The Prime Minister said he was representing His Majesty King Mswat III during the meeting as he came back late from his visit in Lesotho. The Prime Minister says the relations between Eswatini and the Republic of South Africa are of utmost importance. I take this opportunity on behalf of His Majesty, uh, the government, to welcome you to the Kingdom of Eswatini. Uh, Mr. President, uh, we welcome you to Eswatini, uh, which has in some extent, a very great extent, your second home in um, uh, the ANC and this country has a very long uh, relationship dating from the old days, uh, the time of King Sopus II. Uh, and you in particular, uh, as president of ANC and the president of the country, uh, did a lot to enhance that standing relationship. And uh, we, 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 we value that a, a great deal. And you will always be welcome uh, at any time here. Former President Tabombegi expressed gratitude to the country's authorities. Your Excellency, I mean, well, since we're coming to, to, to Eswatini for that, we agreed that, you know, we, we need to pay a courtesy call on His Majesty. We can't come here and uh, do that at Waterford and then go back. The Prime Minister says the two countries will continue to strengthen the existing relations. For Eswatini TV News, Nelson Langamanda, Skumbuzo Lamini, Babane. Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu has left the country to represent His Majesty King Mswat III at the 2023 United Nations Food Systems Summit in Italy. Member states are expected to report progress on the 2021 food systems resolutions. The Deputy Prime Minister Tamba Masugu has left the kingdom for the 2023 United Nations Food Systems Summit to be held in Rome, Italy, where he is representing His Majesty King Mswati III and the nation. The summit will serve as the first global follow-up to the 2021 Food Systems Summit, where individuals and countries committed to deepen the transformative power of food system for the full realization of all the 17 SDGs. 2030, so we are the 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 Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu further says the high-level meeting aims to provide opportunities for countries to report on the progress made at the national level and on their contributions to the achievement of the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The meeting will start from July 24 to July 26. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I am Sam Kalsuekoza with Sikumbuzo Lamini Nguenya. On another note, the Deputy Prime Minister Temba Masugu is expected to also represent His Majesty King Mswat III in the Russia-Africa Summit. The meeting will take place in St. Petersburg starting from July 27. Summit Russia Africa. Security issues. 
The Deputy Prime Minister says the goal of the summit is to promote efforts to strengthen comprehensive and equal cooperation between Russia and African nations across areas of society, including politics, security, economic relations, science and technology and cultural and humanitarian spheres. The Deputy Prime Minister says the event marks a serious first steps towards Russia's economic and political return to Africa. The Deputy Prime Minister is expected home on July 30. Reporting for Swatini TV News, I am Sam Kalsuekoza with the composer Lamini Ngwenya. Government is doing everything possible to ensure that the country has healthy reserves. This has been said by the Minister of Finance, Neil Reichenberg, during an interview about the recent decline in the country's reserves from 9.3 billion Malangeni in April to 6.9 billion Malangeni in June. This decline is reflected in the May-June Central Bank of Eswatini's monthly statistical release. Part of the reasons for the decline in the reserves, according to the monthly statistical release by the central bank, is the net outflow of foreign currency from trades from local banks. Another reason is the payment of government's fiscal obligations. A week before uh, SACU, the last SACU quarterly receipts came in. So SACU now being up from 1.5 billion a quarter to about 3 billion a quarter means that that 3.9 billion straight away became 9.9 .9 billion overnight when that money came in. So as we sit here now, you'll find SACU receipts are uh, having, having come in as well as the reserves being at a much higher level than what we do. But once again, the, you'll find that in three months' time, just before SACU has come in, they do, they, they dwindle downwards towards that time, and, uh, and SACO again, it, it, it bumps, it bumps uh, every time that it does come in. The International Monetary Funds recommends that countries should have reserves worth of imports of goods and services of three months. The country's reserves had an import and goods cover of 2.8 months in May this year. For Eswatini TV News, Nelson Langamanda, Mbabane. Minister of Information, Communications and Technology Principal Secretary Peshaya Dube says it is important for everyone who uses radio frequency spectrum to use it conservatively. The PS has said this during the Eswatini Radio Communications Conference where he was represented by the Director of Communications, Andreas Lamini. The Eswatini Communications Commission has hosted the first ever Eswatini Radio Communications Conference. The meeting was officially opened by the PS and the Minister of Information, Communications and Technology, Peshe Adube, who was represented by Andreas Lamini. As it is a scarce resource, it is important for everyone who's, who uses Spectrum that we use it conservatively, that we employ technologies that will use uh, Spectrum efficiently and effectively. Yes, ESCOM Director of Technical Services, Tulan Fagudze, shared the goal of the meeting. It is to present and create a platform where as industry stakeholders and uh, users of radio communications resources, we can come together and talk about issues uh, in, in, in that relate to the usage and management of a radio frequency spectrum. This conference will be followed by the International Telecommunications Radio Communication Conference in November, which will be held in the United Arab Emirates. Reporting for Eswatini TV News, I'm Sam Kalsuekoza with the Kumbuzo Tlamini Esulini. Dear viewers, now take a look at our financial updates. was proudly brought to you by eBet. Don't hesitate. Visit us today at ebet.co.sz. eBet, born to win. Welcome back. You're still watching a SWAT in a TV and for sports news. Pigs Big Black Swallows Football Club under the National First Division still leads the board with most votes in the 2023 Momo Cup. All the 28 teams have so far accumulated over 2 million votes. Voting ends on the 18th of September this year.
The Premier League of Eswatini has released the latest number of votes under the Momo Cup tournament that has all the 28 teams within the Premier League and the National First Division. Picks Pick Black Swallows still stand and still top with the votes of 775,367. Losita Spurs, who also are from the National First Division, Losita Spurs have got 506,474 votes. The Big Three, Babane Swallows is on the third position with over 285 votes. Babane Highlanders is on the fourth position with over 248,000. Manzini Wanderers is at the eighth position with over 166,000 votes. In total, the 28 teams so far have accumulated over 2,940,000 votes. The closing day of voting will be on the 18th of September this year. For certain TV sports, for this one, Babani. The sports was proudly brought to you by eBet. Don't hesitate. Visit us today at ebet.co.sz. eBet, born to win. That is all we had for tonight, but before we wrap up, I'll take a quick recap of today's headlines. His Royal Highness Prince Banzile says it is very crucial that the Kingdom of Eswatini joins the rest of the world in addressing and closing the gap on epilepsy treatment and reduce the deaths and disabilities caused by epilepsy. His Royal Highness Prince Mtuasho says a majority of kidney or renal patients in the Kingdom of Eswatini have numerous needs and this calls for support from Emaswat and local businesses. Former South African President Thabo Mbegi, who is currently in the country to attend the Waterford Gamtlaba Africa Week event this Friday, paid a courtesy visit to the Prime Minister Cleopas Lamini at Cabinet offices. That brings us to the end of our news bulletin tonight. Up next is the weather forecast for selected towns. Good night, Swatini. It's the Great Price Rewind at Spa. You could be one of our lucky Instant Rewards customers to win your entire shop at a price from 1968. 